Okay, so welcome, Rabbi Joseph Edery. Thank no, you. No, he's oh, he's supposed what? to do that. Wait, wait, wait. No, no. Let him answer. Me. Wait a minute. <laughs> I'm a new. Now, now, now. Because Let him do this. These are the outtakes. Now, these are the outtakes that later on, you know. So okay, now. bonus, bonus content. Good. So we want to try for the Nation of Ephraim for the bonus content members. We want to try now to invite. This is the first time. This is the sixteenth. 17th video that we're doing yes. uh, Torah Club Shior, uh, talking about all the good things in the Torah, about Mashiach and we want to ask Hannes if he wants to join Yes, uh, he says so, some some minutes, but in not now minutes. Okay, so then we can actually you know, prepare people um, you know, for the point when Hannes comes in, because we said in a way um I mean, we are two very completely different characters, you know, me, a back, uh, Christian German background and you, Hasidic New Yorker background. And yes. now because of the Torah and because of Jerusalem, because Israel and the great promises of Hashem. So um, we started an unprecedented cooperation. And, um, you know, it's... Um, for both of us, I think it's sometimes hard, you know, to, uh, you know, to stay focused, to stay focused. So one of the uh, uh, issues, you know, we had before, so you have a new background picture. So because we are, we are now um, the I... fifth judge in the Sanhedrin initiative joined. So it's, it's a great reporting. And so I put today here this background picture in and I wanted to uh, tell you a bit about it because, you know, for those people who, you know, join. When they come to Israel, uh, to Torah Club. Oh, one second, one second. Ein minute, ein minute, one second. Hans just called me. Let me let me call him back. Hans. Hannes, are you? Do you want it? Huh? It's okay. It's. It, you want to join? Join. I'll explain you everything if you have time now. If you're interested, we can go. Uh, so basically, me and Ulf, we both have a lot on our minds. Yeah, almost like overload. You know, too much going on. So what we need is instead of. So you just keep track that basically half the video is me, half the video is him. You introduce us a little bit, maybe ask some questions. If you see we're talking too much, you tell you ask a question for the other guy. You know, that exactly. kind of thing. Nothing crazy. You know, and uh, do not leave open ends. You know, once a while we tend to forget something and then... Okay, so join the link and, and we're, we're waiting for you. Three minutes, no problem, Hans. No problem. Okay, we're waiting for you. <laughs> so pe perfect. We can use the three minutes for advertising. For advertising, you know, of course. Um, now we have here in the corner here this uh, join for ten program. So when you go to Torah Club, it's for ten bucks. You know, you can basically uh, in one shot you get like I don't know how many. Um, I think over hundred hours of video explanations. Um, in uh, German and English, including, for example, you know, the uh, explanations of the Chabad, you know, what they say about the Moshiach, that it has to be a, a righteous kind of from David and, and so on and so on. So, and we put this today together in a Zion elite uh, report uh, issue. And so today I chose here the background because we are talking about our temple, uh, our Sanhedrin initiative. And of course, you know, starting to rebuild the temple and, you know, going back to the Levitical priesthood and so on. And over the last years or decades, since I'm involved in this uh, type of work, well, Mike Pompeo, U.S. Secretary of State, has been one of the most active supporters of the state of Israel and, um, you know, together with here David Melech Friedman. And so they're here at the synagogue, basically under the, not at the, you know, at the Western Wall. You have at the Western Wall and then you go into the tunnel. You know, and then this, this is a completely built out synagogue. So this is the closest synagogue to the former, um, 
holiest of holies to the um, um, to the temple to the Beit Hamikdash, you know, um, and they built here this you know pomegranate, and there has been a very long discussion about this. You know, people thought, okay, oh my gosh, this is an abomination of desolation, and people don't understand. I said, no, the <laughs> You know, the, the pomegranate is a sign for the high priest, the high priest. And inside, it's an ark for the Torah. You know, and what they actually did, you know, so uh, Mike Pompeo, during this con press conference, they had a press conference, okay? On this press conference, it is said that America today is the new Rome. They are the new Rome, the new Edom. But why? Because out of their history with the Bible, they thought they are the new Jerusalem. So everything what they're doing, what the Americans did from their perspective is, you know, to fulfill biblical prophecies best seen in David Mellon Friedman. I mean, he is a Kohen. You know, he has been at the Western Wall for the, uh, for the priestly blessing, you know, during... Uh, uh, holidays and so on and his David uh, his Friedman Center for Peace you know who arranged the Abraham Accords and so on and so on so front page front page the vision of the prophets of Isaiah has to be fulfilled that one day when the Torah goes out from Zion and the word from the Lord of from Jerusalem where well, then there will be somebody coming to bring peace no, and that the swords are put into plowshares. And so this is currently the whole background from, from our perspective. So while we saw Trump striving for peace, uh, declaring Jerusalem as capital, uh, opening up the embassy, um, annexing the Golan, uh, doing the peace and prosperity plan for Judea and Samaria, the left completely, utterly destroyed this. And now yes. we are uh, Ukraine war. Uh, we had uh, Corona. We had. I mean, it's it's crazy what's going on, and uh, we have now a never seen before wave of violence and terrorism in Israel. And that's what we said before. Uh, you know, right now when we spoke today on the phone, there were tens of thousands of demonstrators in front of the Knesset. You know, and in Tel Aviv. You know, and in the Knesset, I actually saw videos after we spoke that people were rushing in the Knesset, the same place where I, I was. But it's um, uh, it's honestly very, very sad because yes. and, and you know what? I want to say, well, we what we're doing with the with the Sanhedrin initiative couldn't have come at a better time. Absolutely, you have you have I'm um, now. You know, so, sometimes we talk and we study and we're just in the world of of the Torah. We're already in the world of Mashiach, you know. And then when we come back and we say, okay, the solution is A, B, and C, Aleph, Beis, Gimel, you know. Emuna, Bitachen, Geula, Sanhedrin. So we are, we we decide, okay, we're going to go and do some action. We're going to, we're going to bring something new that doesn't exist. The Sanhedrin, justice in the world, the way yeah. Hashem would want it, creating the Torah the oral tradition and the written tradition, Torah Shebiktav and Torah Shebaopeh, as the chukah, as the law of Israel, and have the Sanhedrin be in charge and have the authority to interpret that law. Not any Christians, not any Muslims, Absolutely. but the Jewish Torah law. Yeah. I was, you know, because uh, the fundraiser is still running, and uh, we, here we go, Hannes is here. So the fun, we'll just finish my point. Hey, I Hi. So I was just saying, as Salim. as the we're doing now the bonus content till you came. We'll I'll just finish my point and then we'll go into the official uh, video. So the 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 protests now in the Knesset in the same exact room that me and Professor Avram Ehrlich sat, and in the same exact room that now Professor Avram Ehrlich spoke about how we have to monitor AI, artificial intelligence, make sure that the command of artificial intelligence yes. is according to Torah, and so on and so forth. So in at this time, the Knesset is being rushed by the left. Of course, the left, now their true colors are showing. They lost democratically, and now they want to try with violence.
protests. And one of the guys in the Knesset today said that he was at one of the protests and he saw a bunch of things shining and it was all the Rolexes of all the rich guys that were at the <laughs> protests. Because all these guys, they're all riding, you know, imagine you pull up to a protest, you you hope that there's going to be some homeless guys, some some lost cases that are really fighting for freedom. You see everybody pulling up in their Mercedes, all the parking lots full of Mercedes, you know, and now they're getting out. They're upset. They're upset that there's too much justice. Their scam is not working anymore. So uh, let's hope that it all works out. So this is the bonus content. So Hans is here. Hans is the moderator. And uh, we'll see you guys at the uh, official number 17 Torah Zoom call. Yeah. I will do the introduction. Yes. So uh, nice to see you both guys. And, and uh, I want to say welcome to all our uh, watchers in, in the stream and somewhere maybe at Torah Club and also on YouTube from uh, channel of Mr. Rabbi Josef Izzeri. And nice to invite you both guys, Ephraim Priest, uh, order after the order of order of Melchizedek, leader of the nation of Ephraim, and Rabbi Yosef Ideri from the Chabad, who uh, is uh, focusing on the Sanhedrin initiatives. Your talks are going now around three months, uh, I guess. So a lot of people follow your talks already and enjoy them very much once a week. So and today. We met, met us again here. I'm, I'm happy for that. And we have uh, historic events in the Holy Land. Uh, everybody can read in the international uh, press about it. It's a conflict about between uh, democracy uh, and uh, maybe Torah-based uh, Orthodox uh, uh, foundation of the Jewish uh, family. Yeah. So, okay, uh, let's start. Let's go in the, into the topic. So um, maybe you, Rabbi Yosef, you want to start a little bit about the ongoings in the Holy Land. Uh, thank you. Yes. Uh, thank you, Hannes. And uh, I'm going to talk. First of all, thank you for hosting us at such a short notice. Thank you all again for hosting us in general, the uh, nation of Ephraim. Um, so today what's happening in Israel is that the left are protesting. And it was actually very funny because they're like, dancing and singing and chanting something like you would see in a lunchroom in a third grade uh, elementary school you know and then like they're making a tantrum and you know sitting on the floor and there's like knesset members with suits and ties just just acting like a, like a muppet show and then and then you have the guys that are protesting are these very very rich guys that they shouldn't usually be involved in this kind of stuff but the point is really, and, and, and I think that the most important thing for us to do is look at what each person's role is in this world. If, if, if the donkey is carrying the heavy load, the cow is giving milk, and so on and so forth in the example. So then if each person knows what he's supposed to be doing, then there shouldn't be any issues. I think the issue becomes when people don't know what they're supposed to be doing. So let's make something clear. On one hand, you have Itamar ben -Gvir which is the reason for most of the protests. Okay, let's start from that. And the reason is because he's making it much, much more harsh for the terrorists in jail to, you know, to enjoy themselves with a pita and a lafa. He's taking away the, the, the luxuries of the jail cells, which is a complete you know, disaster, you know, because these terrorists, 80% of them plan on hanging out in jail after they know their parents are going to get tens of thousands of dollars because they did this terror attack and they made it to jail. So it's almost like it's almost like um, it's almost like encouraged for these kids after they're brainwashed for so long. So now the left now what's happening is the left thrives of death, of chaos, of of confusion, of darkness. And the second thing starts to become clear in other words, terrorists are getting punished. People that build on top of a mountain, you know, for a Jewish guy to build a house costs, you know, millions of shekel. My brother just put down a mortgage for a house in Sfas. We're talking about hundreds of thousands of shekel just to get into the into the story, minimum just to buy the property, just to get into the auction. And then we're talking about millions of shekels to actually build 
a house today. So these Arabs, they just find a, a house on top of a mountain. They say they get a paper from uh, from uh, some, some from the Palestinian Authority. This is my grandmother's house. This is our old property, and they can own, they own the whole mountain. You know, you know three hundred million dollars in real estate in 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 Israel, like that is theirs. So Itamar Ben Gvir has had enough of this craziness, this lawlessness, and the issue is really we have drug running from all over from Egypt. The Arabs are bringing in drugs. They're making millions and billions of dollars off of this. They're funding terror attacks. It's all combined. It's all one big salad that each connects to the other. Anytime our bank is locking down on the whole thing. So um, this is obviously shaking up a lot of different pieces of the corruption. And now what you're seeing is this. You might They might look like Knesset members, but they're the representatives of the drug lords. They're the representatives of the terror attacks. They're the representative of the dirty money that's funding the terror attacks behind the scenes. So we have all this garbage being flushed down the drain. They can't even explain why they're protesting. I was looking, I was passing by Rosh Pina. I was trying to read the signs. What are you guys, what What are you protesting? Oh, we're protesting the difference between the chukah of the justice system. Why do you care? What does it matter? Everybody knows that Israel... Is, is the, the justice system in Israel is so corrupt, there's no nothing to compare it to in the whole world. It's chaver mevi chaver. A, a, a family member brings a family member. There's there's nothing more corrupt than this in the whole in the whole democracy of the whole world. So everybody understands that there's no logical reason why this should continue. So what are they protesting? They're protesting the 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 dirt, you know, in the middle of the road, the, the things that are, you know, as uh, you know, they just got very used to. And if you're living in Sdom and Amora, if you're living under Rome, Rome's energy comes from three things. Spilling of blood, uh, immodest behavior, you know, uh, immorality and idol worship. And that is the source of all their energy, killing and immoral, immoral behavior. And idol worship. So the second we change sources of energy, we're going to the Torah now. We have a majority in, in the in the Knesset that is ultra orthodox people. So I think there's a lot of confusion, and uh, and we're seeing these protests. But I don't believe that they're going to change anything from the direction we're going in. Yes, it brings us uh, directly to the point. Uh... Maybe this all protesting from the leftists seems like an absence of uh, true law, of the true Torah law, the absence of the true Torah law. Uh, this is why also we started with uh, under the priest of the order of Mechizedek. Uh, I think uh, you can say something to this also, what, what you feel about the absence of uh, Torah law, Wolf, what do you think? Um, yeah, it's not only the absence of Kutora law, you know, one of the big issues currently within the discussion on the justice system is that the state of Israel does not have a constitution. They only have a basic law. And uh, so in our discussion, so wait a second, the people of Israel, where well, they have a constitution, which is the Torah. And now we are uh, those people who after, you know, 30, 40, 50 years of a living Jerusalem, modern day Israel, um, people move there like you, Joseph. I mean, you grew up in New York, but then you decided to move to Israel. Why? Because you said, yes, I belong to the people of the book. So it's not the, uh, the laws which the government gives me. No, it's the Lord Hashem gives me. And this is the reason why I live in Israel. And now you have the, what people call the Erev Rav, you know, the socialists who created Zionism as a political movement to create a home place for the Jewish people. And now... After, you know, 75 years of Israel, those who created the secular state without the Torah, you know, are facing now a showdown with those people who came to Israel because of the Bible and because of the book. And this is, I believe, you know, the core issue that the, the whole system, the state system of our democracy was created for religious freedom. But 
religious freedom entitles to have no religion whatsoever. This is what here Mike Pompeo always said. Yeah, okay, religious freedom entitles you to not have a religion whatsoever. Okay. And so now it's, of course, a huge big threat. So when we use our religious freedom to keep the Torah and to vote righteous people into government, well, then there will be justice, order, and law. And this is what the left absolutely hates. And they will go against this, like, with every little power they have. That's what I thought. So this is why, you know, I love, you know, the Sanhedrin initiative. And Joseph, we spoke about it. One of the main issues has to be that we, the people of Israel, regardless if they are Jewish or not Jewish, Israel, there are a lot of guys there, you know, we have to say, oh, wait a second, we have a constitution. It's, it's, it's a Bible. The Pope says it's it. The, the president of the United States swears on it. Uh, David Mellef Friedman will confirm this. Mike Pompeo will confirm this. The Bible is the constitution of Israel. And when oh. that is accepted by the law, I think uh, this is the uh, this is a political earthquake whatsoever. And then, you know, all things are changing. Because then you have an eternal law, which didn't change whatsoever. And you just need wise judges to decide a case. That's it. Instead of making permanently new laws. As Absolutely. Ulf, uh, I'd like... I'd like to add to Ulf, if that's okay. Um, I, I believe that it, our job is to create a positive narrative, a way that all people, whether, like we said, Jewish, not, religious, orthodox, right, left, even in Israel, because many of the left, so to speak, in Israel, they really don't know what's going on. They kind of identify with the movements of the politics, but they don't really know exactly what's going on. So I want to clarify why even a person that identifies as a leftist should actually support the right wing at this time. And we need to go back and look at Herzl, because Herzl is the one who founded the country of Israel. Okay, the Zionist idea. In the beginning, he was thinking of Uganda, but then he said Israel. And I, and I think that for a long time, I had a perception that the reason why he wanted Uganda was because he didn't care about the Torah. But I was, I came to to a conclusion that it's very possible that he foresaw the level of anti-Semitism that would come in World War II, and what he wanted to do was save the Jews as soon as possible. And when you're talking about pikuach nefesh, saving lives, it really doesn't matter if it's Uganda or Israel or America. As long as you get the Jews out of the way of this wave of anti-Semitism that he realized was definitely coming. So if we look at it like that, we actually can see a way that the religious Jews and the non-religious Jews, what we call the Haskalah movement, the Zionist movement, actually were able to align themselves. And we see this with the Rebbe. And what we're doing really is just adding cannonballs to the Rebbe's canon, we're just continuing the unity that the Rebbe created within the Jewish people, whether secular or not, or whether, uh, again, other, uh, all of Israel and all of the Bnei Noach all over the world. So you had many different people come to the Rebbe, you know, uh, from all walks of life, and the Rebbe was creating unity between those who understand that the Torah is important, but but also understand that, that, uh, that Pikuach Nefesh is important, the, and the Rebbe understood that as well. So I believe that um, we need to make clear to the secular people in Israel, whether they are religious or not, whether they are currently Torah observant or not, that we in no way are trying to diminish the importance of the security of the state of Israel. In other words, we are not trying, the strategy of the right is not going to throw the security of Israel under the bus and sacrifice it, and in the place of it, put the Torah. The contrary is true. We are going to build, not just survive in a pikuach nefesh environment where we're just worried about our lives, but we also want to thrive. And the way the Jewish people thrive 
is if we add the Torah to the already existing system. So they don't have to be scared or worried of the four deaths of the Sanhedrin court because the point that the Sanhedrin is being established for is really because it's part of the Torah law. We cannot, we cannot build a temple if we don't have a Sanhedrin. We cannot fulfill the commandments that the Jewish people want to fulfill, you know? Keeping kosher, we don't, you know, there were blood libels back in the day. The non-Jews thought that in order for Jews to fulfill commandments, they have to slaughter a Christian boys, you know, for the matzah. <laughs> but this is not true, obviously, right? So, so yeah, really? in order for us... <laughs> for in order for us in order for us to fulfill the commandments of the Torah we need a Sanhedrin and we need the Beit HaMikdash we need the Temple Mount but it doesn't mean that anything that we have right now which is the security of the Ger Toshav the, the Noahides that live in Israel those who accept upon themselves the Torah including our Muslim brothers and our Noahide brothers throughout the land their security is guaranteed all we're trying to do is that the religious Jews should be able to fulfill their mission of being a light unto the nations. We need a Sanhedrin. We need Jewish justice. We need the Torah to be incorporated into the system. This is going to be better for us. This is going to be better for the whole world. So. Ah, nice speech. And I want to put on top of this, uh, you know, I, um, earlier on, I was looking um you know, for the, um, I put now up here, so, the Declaration of Independence, the Declaration of Independence from the State of Israel, okay? So this is here, uh, the official document, <coughs> Ben-Gurion, you know, we can put this on. The Declaration of Independence from the State of Israel. Eretz Israel was the birthplace of the Jewish people. Here their spiritual, religious, and political identity was shaped. Here they first attained a statehood, created cultural values of national and universal significance, and gave the world the eternal books of books. So regardless how um, secular these guys were, Regard uh, uh, irresponsible. Every Jew knows without the Torah, there is no claim to the land of Israel. It's all, with without Torah, there is no Jewish people, there is no Israel, there is no land, there is no nothing. There is nothing. Okay, and um, so now, of course, here comes now the whole spiel. Of course, in the year five thousand seven six hundred fifty six, so eighteen ninety seven. At the summons of the spiritual father of the Jewish state, Theodor Herzl, the first Zionist Congress convened and proclaimed the right of the Jewish people to national rebirth in its own country. So this is was amazing because for hundreds and hundreds of years, the Jewish people ran around and there was no place, no home. You know, the story of the wandering Jew, a very, a very sad story. So he was really the first guy who says, no, the only place where we have to go back, we have to create and rebirth that nation. You know, then, of course, we have here the Belfort Declaration, 2nd November <clears throat> 1917. And now a lot of people say, so this is at the time of the socialist revolution. And we have the Zionist socialists and the other socialists, you know, in, I mean, they created havoc and basically brought down the, uh, the, the monarchic order we had in Europe before. Okay, so this is basically the Belfort Declaration for the Jewish state is in a way the start of our democracy. You know, you had the, in Russia, you had the uh, revolution 1917 and to Germany, you know, uh, Herzl had everything in German. Well, the revolution came 1918. You know? So now we have, of course, the thing here with the United Nations uh, with the uh, 29th November 1947, where the United Nation now created this uh, United Nation, the General Council. Now, very important here, 
we declare with the effect of the moment termination of the mandate being tonight the eve of the sixth year 5708 15th may 1948 until the establishment of the elected regulatory authority of the state in accordance with the constitution which shall be adopted by the elected constituent assembly not later than the 1st October 1948. So they said there will be a constitution and up to this day there is no constitution. Okay? Uh, but what they say there is the provisional government of the Jewish state and that Jewish state is called Israel. The state of Israel will be open to Jewish immigration and for the ingathering of the exiles. Now, there is only one place. Yeah. So, he will raise a banner for the nations and gather the exiles of Israel and he will assemble the scattered people of Judah. So we have two groups and um, ben, uh, David Ben-Gurion, Theodor Herzl and all the other guys, they knew, yes, there are the Jewish people. Yes, absolutely. Here they are scattered to the four corners of the world. They found their new place in Babylon, New York. You know, they are in Brooklyn. You know, the majority of the Jews of the world at one point lived all in Brooklyn. Okay, they are scattered. But then there are the exiles. And the exiles of Israel are not the same like the people of Judah. And my thing is, so, so now we are here, it will foster the development of the country for the benefit of all its inhabitants. It will be based on freedom, justice and peace as envisioned by the prophets of Israel. That the Torah will go out from Zion and the word will go from there. It will ensure complete equality of social and political rights to all its inhabitants, irrespective of religion. So you don't have to be Orthodox Jewish Hasid. You know, you can also be an Ephraimite, you know, coming down from Germany when you keep the Torah. And Israel accepts this. And this is why it's very important, Joseph, that we put in our, our religious freedom is to make peace with the Jewish people. That's our freedom yes. of religion. So and this is regardless of race or sex. It will guarantee freedom of religion. So the state of Israel, the left guys, the left guys currently demonstrating, yes, freedom, freedom, freedom. Yeah, this is what the state of Israel says in the declaration that we have to have freedom of religion. And this entitles also to create a Sanhedrin, to create a good justice system, to have, you know, a basic set of rules and regulations, seven laws of Noah, um, the two commandments of love, you know, love God and love your neighbor of yourself. I mean, there has to be, you know, the, the, the laws, the commandments in Mitzvah has to be taught. And the state has to guarantee for our safety and for everything else so that we are able to perform our religion according to our conscience completely free with you know conscience language education and culture so it guarantees it will safeguard the holy places of all religions they're super bingo what's with our temple and also, Ulf, you see on the bottom, the last one is we appeal to the Jewish people throughout the diaspora to rally around the Jews of Eretz Israel and the tasks of immigration, upholding them by the stand uh, there. Yeah. Them yeah. in the great struggle for the realization of the age old dream, the redemption the of Geula. Absolutely. Israel. The so Geula. baked, exactly, baked into. The Constitution of Israel, it's clear as day that the only reason this paper exists and the only reason that the straggling Jews that survived the Holocaust, most of the soldiers that were fighting uh, of the War of Independence and later the Six-Day War still had 
the numbers on their arms, you know? Yes. And they the reason they made this big fight and this and, and the reason they got together to put this together, this paper together, the last words here is the redemption of Israel, placing our trust, like you right here. Yeah. Placing, placing our, our trust, trust in the rock of Israel. The rock, of, the rock Israel. of our salvation, exactly. Yeah. So, so you see here, and they use the Israeli dates, they use the Hebrew dates. This is definitely 100% legal as far as the whole existence, and this is the whole purpose, this is all the blessing, this is the spiritual reason that Israel exists. Okay, is exactly but, for this changing the laws of the of the justice system is just just touching the tip of the iceberg what these people really need to understand is is that the third temple and the sanhedrin and the king and the, the eradication of amalek is all the is is what gives the state of israel as a secular state spiritually physically in every single way if this is not the mission statement of the state of israel the state of Israel doesn't deserve to exist, not legally. This is not what the people that came out of the Holocaust fought for. And you lose all your rights to exist. So the corruption is, uh, uh, in Hebrew we say, the corruption is celebrating. So that was as long as the left were in power. They stole, uh, like, like we say, they stole the election. It's almost an uh, abused word by now. But Bennett was... Bennett, which was a religious guy, yes, partnered with Arabs against his voters. In other words, his voters did not agree that he should line up with the Arabs, but he did that anyway. And then he was in he was in charge during the whole the dark ages of the Corona. And yes, I have my the, uh, theories so about quiet this. about that. I have my very theories about this because. You know, Bennett wanted to go against Netanyahu already in the previous government. And then he was pulled in by uh, Rabbi Druck, Druckmann and then refrained from it. So, so he really wanted to let the government fall already. This was in uh, November 2018. And then there was some spiel concerning national security where then Bennett said, OK, we, uh, you know, I will refrain from taking over, let the government crash. and then. I think this is in really in connection with uh, the events of 2018 with Bennett, uh -huh. you know, because it was like totally strange. He went then to Yair Lapid. Think about this. Who voted for Yair Lapid? You know, then he became the uh, the last prime minister over Judea and Samaria at the date when the all the law ceased over Judea and Samaria, and suddenly you had Yair Lapid where you said, uh, "Who voted for this guy?" Okay. <laughs> yeah. so, no, but um, one of the uh, uh, what in me, Hans, the, Hans, uh, what, what are you thinking, Hans? No, maybe Ulf can finish what he wants to say. Go ahead, I, Hans. Tell us what yeah. to do. No, Ulf, Ulf, please finish what you want to say, and then I go after you. Yes, I, I wanted to, you know, uh, go back, you know, to the uh, Declaration of Independence by David Ben Gurion. That from there, definitely envisioned by the prophet. So there is a vision of peace by the prophet. So by the prophet of Ezekiel, the prophet Ezekiel, of course, Zechariah, the prince of peace. You know. So anyhow, so this is the vision of the prophets to bring peace. Okay. Now, when we go directly to the prophets, well, then we see. We had this, I mean, this is why we are here, where we have the whole spiel that the full Geula, the redemption of Israel, without Ephraim and Joseph, is not going to happen. Ephraim and Judah have to come together because this is what the prophets envisioned. Okay, <clears throat> so it's very fine that we are here already together with you both, Ephraim and Judah. I'm really happy to, for that connection. So I want to really a little bit recapitulate what we already learned today. So you said to, you said to me early today also, Rabbi Ederi, that the Sanhedrin is finally a peace court, a, a court of, of peace times. So and you said, yeah, the leftists say finally they don't need to have uh, be scared because we want to make peace and somewhere. 
but but we we learned already in the last years in the nation of Ephraim that yeah we want to finally build peace but it it is has to do with something like an accounting before like with a judgment because uh, all the people like for the de de uh, the declaration of independence or what's a, what's an, is this the correct name uh, they yes. pre they prepared uh, in the, the let's say religious secular people who prepared for prophet for they know the prophets prophecies and they, they prepared some law that the prophecies will can fulfill at the end of time. It's the same like with your image, Wolf, in your background. Uh, maybe you can say also something to this because um, you can tell about the audience maybe about this. It's the same. Like the, maybe it's a final place for the Sun Hedwin, I guess, uh, which they prepared already. So people prepared stuff that prophecies will fulfill in the end, which is really, I guess, today. Uh, but but maybe, Rabbi Ederi, you can say something, or you both can say something about this topic. How, what's with the judgment? Uh, so, of course, the leftists maybe are scared for some real reasons, because they know they their shit will come to an end, you know? So Okay, so... So I, I want to talk to that, and I want to start with what the Torah says. It says that when Hashem created the world, in the beginning, Hashem created the world with judgment. He saw the world cannot survive. I'm not quoting it exactly, but he brought the character of mercy. In other words, of course, Hashem tried to create. This is the this is uh, of course Rashi and the oral tradition that we have from Mount Sinai tells us that when Hashem created the world, He created it in the beginning with justice, hardcore. Somebody would do something, they would get smacked right on the spot, and then He Hashem saw that the world cannot exist just with the midah of din of justice. So He added the midah of mercy. A Sanhedrin that would kill someone once in seventy years was considered a bloody Sanhedrin. In practice, the Sanhedrin barely ever, 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 ever killed anyone. So in the Torah, it's exactly the opposite of the way it is in the law today. Today, in the law, a cop can stop you and literally can probably give you a ticket for anything, you know, for breathing in the wrong direction. I mean, in Corona, you literally could get a ticket for breathing. And for not doing something that you were supposed to do for a victimless crime that means nobody was hurt but you crossed the street at the wrong time in three o'clock in the morning when nobody was there but the cop was behind it. so night everything is, is destroyed it's corruption and it's dini it's it's uh, justice judgment the Torah is exactly the opposite. The Torah says very, very harsh things. You don't keep the Shabbos, you're going to die. You know, you do this, you're going to die. You're going to do this, you're going to die. But to actually do that, to actually get someone to die, the procedure was so compl complicated that it would never actually end up happening. The reason the Torah is speaking so harsh and so brash is because it's teaching us through learning the Torah, what is right and what is wrong, what's correct and what's incorrect, what is the correct way of living, what does Hashem want, and what is not. I give you today the death and the life, the blessing and the curse, and you should choose life, you know. So the Torah is helping us just from the learning to understand where we're going. Like we said, anshe shame, people of name. So people of name can be people of reputation. So they have a good reputation. They have a good name. Or it could also be a shame. They gave names. Just like Adam, Adam, the first man, he gave names to everything in the world. Because when you name something, you give it value. You give it the correct thing it's supposed to be doing. So the Sanhedrin is just interpreting the Torah and teaching it to the world, giving everything significance 
putting everybody at ease because now everybody knows what they're supposed to be focused on. Edom has a blessing. You should live on your sword. He's supposed to protect Yaakov from the kol kol Yaakov. The, the word is Yaakov. To study the Torah and to teach the word of Hashem. Yishmael has a blessing from Avraham Avinu. From our father Avraham. And he is not part of the dancing around of Esau, of Edom, of Rome, and Jacob. He has his own blessing. And he's blessed to be and to do business with his uh, uh, his siblings, which are the children of Keturah, which are the uh, children of Hagar. Hagar was named Keturah later. So Yishmael has his own blessing from Abraham, and eventually he will do tshuva. But the issue is, is that Eno Yadea he doesn't know how to help the rest of the world fix their issues. And that's why only he can do tshuva in his way. So the Arabs serve Hashem, but they're not able to understand all the intricate details of the rest of the world's issues and uplift them to Hashem. This is Yaakov's job, and Yaakov can only do this if Edom protects him, gives him a perimeter from which to work from. So once everybody understands where their job is supposed to be, there shouldn't be any issues. The Yishmael they, they will understand that their job is to support the Jewish people, to support the building of the temple. And I want to say that after the Crusades, the Temple Mount that actually cleaned it up, they actually understood how important and sanct the sanctity of Israel and the, the Temple Mount was. The Muslims actually brought Jewish families back to Jerusalem because they understood that this is a holy place. The, the reason the Dome of the Rock was built was to honor the second temple and to continue that great legacy. The reason it's there and the reason that Muslims don't pray towards the Dome of the Rock is because the reason it was built by the Muslims, the early Muslims, was because they were holding it as a placeholder for the third temple, the Dome of the Rock was built, were very, very happy and excited that it was built because they saw the place of Hashem being glorified once again. The end of the prophecies that the wolves, Shualim Yil Chuba, that the foxes will walk between the rocks on the Temple Mount in the destruction are, was over because now the place was being respected. The early, a thousand years ago when the Muslims built the mosque, or something like that, I don't believe that the earlier Muslims would ever imagine that that are actually disturbing the Jewish people from building the third temple. This makes them probably roll in their graves because the Quran itself backs up what the Torah says. So that's that. Yeah, but uh, we learned also in the last streams of you both that uh, today in our time, Obama has a lot of many to do with with that the Temple Mount uh, is finally a little bit in the end of the Muslims. But uh, Ulf, what what you I think you have uh, had uh, much to say about. Yeah, you uh, if when you want st uh, start uh, talking about the topic of the Temple Mount, you know, and how the things are uh, coming about. I mean, you could uh, literally fill whole documentary series. Yeah, so I think we uh, we should focus on the um, on the very idea. So then, when uh, 1967, um, so the IDF conquered the Temple Mount. All right. And then it became into the hands of the Jewish people. And of course, Rabbi Gorin, I think it was uh, his Rabbi Gorin, then went, you know, with the shofar and blew at the Western Wall for the first time, you know, in 1897 years in freedom. So, but then the decision was from all the rabbis, they said, oh my gosh, you know, when we keep the now the thing, we have to keep the status quo, otherwise the third world war will break out when we take now, when we kick out the, uh, the Muslims from the mount. And so they left and said, okay, we leave the problem for the Moshiach. 
he will work it out. And now we have 56 years later. And uh, well, okay, you know the story, but this is uh, basically now, um, so 1967, so now we are 56 years later. And of course, you know, the Moshiach has to finish this thing, but the Temple Mount um, is stored by the Pope, by the church, you know, I mean, by the laws uh, within the framework of the international community from the United Nations. So the Pope has a lit on Jerusalem, on all Jerusalem and specifically the Temple Mount. You saw this when um, Donald Trump declared Jerusalem capital of Israel. Immediately, immediately, you know, suddenly Erdogan visited the Pope. You know, for 400 years, you know, um, Jerusalem was part of the Ottoman Empire. They built the, the, the wall around Jerusalem, 1548. Zulaiman, the you know Zulaiman, blah blah blah. So he built the wall of Jerusalem. So suddenly Erdogan, you know the nice cali <laughs> the new caliphate, you know. So he sits suddenly with Rome, with Adam, and discusses about Jerusalem. And now, so oh. Rome and Ishmael, you know, they even made a contract, and they are deciding, ah, okay, we are wiping out Israel. We are plotting out the name of Israel. And we don't want to talk about this anymore. You know, we, the Muslims, you know, the uh, and the socialists and the Catholics, we agree, you know, that the Jewish people have no, um, you know, no access or no right to, to, to do the Temple Mount. This is what, you know, the our democracy brought up before. So this is what I see, you know. Absolutely. The, oh. the wrong piece of the leftists. It's a wrong piece of the leftists. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a fake piece that the leftist says. Yeah, look at this. You know, we brought together the Roman Catholics and we brought them together with the Muslims on the things, and we brought them together with the liberal Jews. And look at this. You know, um, so now there is this visible piece, this unity and diversity and LGBT, and it doesn't matter. You can have any gender, any belief. You're one, but in the moment. You say, ah, wait a second, uh, there is, hey, wait a second, I, I read in the Bible, you know, Temple Mount belongs to King David. But, but, maybe, but maybe we can add one thing, because you talked already, Ulf, about this uh, Declaration of Independence and the UN, which were, were founded. And so it's, it's important also, I guess, that the same it's with Germany, which, which was founded at, at the, almost the same time, around one year later, in, in 1949, and uh, which has also uh, open question in the UN and has also no real constitution. So the whole foundation of the UN is related to both countries, uh, Israel and Germany. And I, I guess it's the same as the Declaration of Independence. These founders foresee uh, the prophetic uh, aspect of of all this story. Yes, I believe too. Hans, can I say can I say one thing? Of course. Okay, so I wanted to add to uh, Ulf and uh, give the Torah perspective of the connection between Asav and Yishmael, and I think after uh, we'll jump into uh, Yisro, if that's okay. Okay, so Asav and Yishmael. <laughs> So, Yishmael, if we have to look at the story of the Torah and we have to understand who Yishmael is, um, uh, be, being basically what happened was um, Yishmael is playing with Isaac. And anyone who has kids knows that when you have a new child, the earlier child gets jealous. So, you have the firstborn, and then another baby is born, and the second child now needs more attention. Right. And now the, the, the bigger child is, hey, I'm not getting enough attention. So he starts to get mad. So Yishmael was born. And when Yishmael was about 13 years old, Yitzchak is born. So now Yitzchak, of course, the only reason Yishmael was likely told Avraham, I can't have kids. Maybe you should try my maidservant and have some kids. So she basically gave, gave Avraham, Hagar, her maidservant, as a gift, kind of, 
in order that the maidservant should have kids uh, with ha with Avram. So Yishmael is born, and he gets all the attention because he's the only only son of Avram. All of a sudden, Isaac is born because the angel comes and blesses her. And now all the attention is on Isaac. Now when Isaac and Yishmael get older, Yishmael has, has a bow and arrow, and he's aiming it at Isaac's face. And he's, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. So Sarah sees this game, and she says to Avram, look, if they continue playing, you know, Yishmael is... 13 years old, Isaac is just a little kid, he's going to kill him because of jealousy or whatever. I need you to tell him and his mother to leave. And then Avram was very sad because at the end of the day, Yishmael is his son. Listen to what your wife is saying. And she was a bigger prophet than Avraham, we find out later. So, Avraham Avinu sends Hagar and Yishmael <laughs> Okay, there we are. So, so, um, so Yishmael and, and Edom, the connection. So I started going off a little bit on Yishmael and how he got sent out. But eventually, after a few years, Esau, Yaakov and Esau are born, and Esau is going around and hunting, and Yishmael's blessing also includes that he will be a hunter and he will be basically a highwayman, you know? And um, the point is, at the end of the whole story, Ace of he's not listening to his father Isaac when it comes to marrying within the Jewish family. He's not taking uh, a wife from he's taking girls from Canaan. He's messing around. And one of the things he also does as in his wild expeditions and campaigns of finding girls is he takes a uh, daughter of Yishmael as a wife. Okay, so in the Mamzer Club, <laughs> I'm trying to say it like that. In the Mamzer Club, uh, Yishmael and Edom kind of mingle together. They end up marrying each other and they're messing around and it's exciting, you know. So, but as far as the blessings go, as I said earlier, Yishmael has his own blessings from Avraham Avinu and from the angel. And eventually he serves Hashem and he has and he dies at Sadiq. He 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 dies a righteous language for today, that he's not an hindrance to the work of Hashem and Mashiach. And we even see that right now in the Knesset where where um, the Muslims and the, the religious parties both are agreeing on many, many things, like that there should be separate times for people to go swimming and uh, separate times for men, separate times for, for women, so that it, there's modesty. So this is the religious Muslims want this. The Orthodox Jews also want this. So they're getting along on a lot of things that are connected to Hashem. And the only ones left out are the, are the, uh, are the liberal Jews, like we say. So... But I'm saying that as far as Edom is concerned, he has his issue with Yaakov. He's dancing around. Only one sits on the chair. So when Edom, when when Edom is in charge, there's uh, there's uh, immorality, there's bloodshed, and there's idol worship, and the court system is as corrupt as Sodom and Gomorrah or Sodom and Gomorrah. And Yaakov is oppressed. The Jews are crushed under his heel. And when Yaakov is in charge. Then we have the full prophecies of the redemption. There's peace upon the world. God is revealed in the world. And we have justice, righteousness, and honesty in the court systems. And Esau serves Yaakov. Serves just like everybody in the world today is already a slave with debt and garbage. The only difference is that you, you, 
a slave in Mashiach's time is a legal term. Today, you don't even know that you're a slave. You think you're free. There's so much chaos. You don't even realize how much of a slave you really are. And when Mashiach comes, a slave is going to have mansions and, you know, whatever he wants, whatever his heart desires. Ma'adani mitsuim to offer. The Rambam says that in the times of Mashiach, the, you know, the most simple people are going to have so much crap, excuse my French, that it's going to be like the dirt, the dust of the earth. Like yeah. just like you have dirt outside and nobody cares, you're going to have cars and planes and mansions and whatever you can dream of. But in order for that correct world to exist, Yaakov has to be the one giving out the laws. Esav is the one protecting with his perimeter, with the on your sword you shall live. Yishmael is minding his own business. In other words, moving away from Israel in order to allow the temple to be built and to enable the blessings to begin, as written in the Quran and so on. Of course, uh, thanks to Ulf and, and, and many people like Ulf, uh, like Mr. Aloro as well, they are pushing the prophecies of the Torah in a way that the, even the Christians can understand the issues the hindrance to the truth seeker that Christianity produces, you know, because we have, if, if anybody that's learning the New Testament, I briefly read a few things and I realized the kind of poison that this can create, you know, I, we spoke about this today, Ulf, you know, how the, the in Romans it speaks about the Jews, they're not going to listen to you, but then they're going to listen to you if you, you know, if you do this and that and you manipulate them and you kill them and you, and, you, you know, millions of Jews were killed in the name of Jesus. So then they're going to accept Jesus and then everything. That, that kind of stuff is the fantasy and the imagination of, I don't know, random people. This is not prophets. This is nothing important. This is just a reason for the death and the enabling of the incorrect interpretation of the Torah. That's why the Sanhedrin is so important. Yes. Because the Sanhedrin are, that's their job. That's their destiny. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I mean, perhaps this is a good issue. I mean, we are, uh, we had Yitro, of course, we had the Parasha Yitro. You were talking about now um, about a bit earlier about Itzik, you know, Itzik or Esav. Very, uh, also Ishmael and Esav. You know, I uh, thought about this also a long time ago. I mean, it's basically like two cast out ones, depressed, rejected guys. Dep you know, they they join forces. And become now the most, uh, uh, the oldest enemies of, you know, uh, Yaakov, you know, of course, the Jewish people in Israel. I mean, it's amazing. And with the showdown, of course, on Mount Zion, also liberated on the 1967. So I think it's very important, you know, this whole issue with the New Testament and so on. Um, that there is, you know, I... Um, I, in the meantime, you know, I absolutely believe that the you know New Testament, because it's written in Greek, and people still today have this Hellenistic mindset, you know, the whole democracy issue, um, you know, that the Hebrew thinking and the 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 Hebrew idea behind the New Testament, because it's an Orthodox Jew, was never really understood. Okay, so Rome was always Rome. So they subdued, they killed the they killed the Jews, they killed the temple, and so on and so on and so on. And then the idea, you know, the story of one guy who was resurrected from the dead. Now, this is Ezekiel, you know, in, in Ezekiel, the, the dead rise. So now the story <clears throat> of one guy, of one Jew who's resurrected, goes and comes to Rome. And so now this idea of the resurrection is going now into the Roman religion. And they said, okay, what do we do with Shabbat? No, we don't need Shabbat. We have Sunday. All right. So where do we find this? Okay, we have our Sunday worship. Okay, let's say it's uh, the resurrection day. So uh, we have the, uh, you know, Sol Invictus, you know, the day of the rising sun, Christmas. What do we do? Ah, we call it Christmas, the birthday of the Moshiach. <laughs> So what we have today, Christianity was not, no, it was Rome, and they had a pagan religion. And in this pagan religion, the idea of the Jew who died another, and so on and so on, it was inserted in that Roman religion. And this Roman religion ends. The, so the Christianity became, 
you know, I mean, uh, you know, became the belief in Jesus. And Judaism is basically the belief of Jesus. You know, so if you want to have the same belief as Jesus, well, then you have to have an Orthodox Jewish belief and you believe in the Torah and the prophets. Yeah, then you have the belief of Jesus. So this is the guy I was, you know, coming to Germany, you know, coming, reading, oh, what, Torah? Let's go. Hey, firstborn, you know, and it says very specifically, you know, when you receive the power of the Holy Spirit, you will become my witnesses first in Jerusalem, all right, then in Judea, then in Samaria, and then to the ends of the earth. So that's only possible in our lifetime. And this is what I've come, you know, came to Jerusalem. Torah, Torah, go to the rabbis. Okay, don't necessarily do what they do, but definitely listen to what they have to say because they sit on the seat of Moses. Okay, so this is the big issue that Christianity is the belief in one Jew who kept the Torah. And Judaism well, is the belief that all Jews keep the Torah. So this is very funny. So now today... You know, all Christians, what they, can they find out where that Jesus was Jewish and that he kept the Torah? Uh, so now when you're honestly, you wait for a guy, well, then you have to take a look and you have to go back to the Torah. Uh, and this is what uh, today comes out. And this is why I think it's very, very hyper important, you know, that we have a Sanhedrin. And, uh, you know, so... Um, um, and to put this in a framework, you know, we have, uh, according to our religious freedom and the rights which were given, you know, granted by the Constitution of America, the Bill of Rights, you know, our basic law in Germany, we as a religious group, as an NGO, you know, as a, you know, people who believe in the Bible, so we are allowed to have a self-determination. We can determine ourselves how we get organized. And uh, according to my understanding, okay, so we had yesterday, you know, in the parasha, two days before, Yitro, where we have a basic concept, you know, that, you know, the, um, you know, the father of Zipporah comes in and he said, oh my gosh, Moshe, what's happening here? Are you having to take care of all the bullshit, you know, from every little creeping, tiny, from every leftist here? And so he divided the people and said, no, you have to look for good people who know the Hashem, who, you know, keep the Torah and so on. And then, and then you put them over 10, 50, 100 and 1,000. And only the very, very important cases, when it's really, really hard, okay, then you, then you deal with this. And I say this is the most important issue by understanding what we try to do with the Sanhedrin initiative, that... At the end of the day, you know, uh, in my, I believe that most of the inner personal problems, family issues, and so on and so on, well, people should be man enough. They should know between good and, uh, good and bad, left and, uh, there is no left and right, there is only right and wrong. You know, that they should understand what is right and what is wrong. So if you have adult male guys who know the law where well, then they can judge between brothers to make peace but because of our fragmentation out of uh, you know we are coming now from you know in israel their uh, their immigration aliyah from 150 countries at least 150 countries then you have all the different streams of Judaism, who uh, of Judaism, and then we have all the different streams of Christianity, and then we have the different streams of Islam. They all meet in Jerusalem, and now it's a time of say, all right. So who's right? I mean, there is only one book, and so in my understanding, Israel desperately needs um, a Sanhedrin, which rules over biblical questions about biblical questions. So especially what's happening now, uh, you know, with Christians and Jews, what's happening now with Jesus, what's happening to Jerusalem, what's happening to the Temple Mount, and so on and so on, and that they are scholar and, um, you know, provide a service to the world to come to conclusions to very difficult questions. 
So this is why I, um, you know, what why I said, and I would like you to, um, you know, to explain um, again why the Sanhedrin Initiative, what we're trying to accomplish here, is I believe, you know, one of the most important initiatives we can have today, because everybody knows the left. Okay, they don't care about Torah. They don't care about anything. But there are millions, billions of people out. They know, they take a look in the Bible. They read about Jerusalem. They read about the Jewish people. And they want to know what's happening there. So for okay. them, it's absolutely necessary to have a final authority, you know, on top. And I, you know, could you elaborate on this? Um, sure. I, I want to say that I want to start. Uh, I, 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 I'm, we're going to get to this Sanhedrin, and I want to start where you started as well with the and continue uh, the topic of Yisro. is the prophet of Midian and he's an um, so he comes to the Jewish people when they are in the desert after the Torah is given right and he he gives this idea to Moses to create ministers sarim sare alafim sare meot sare asarot or what we call in our group advisors, you know? And the real question is, what's going on? Why does Yisra, uh, the, 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 the priest of Midian, need to be the one to give this idea, right? Why can't Hashem just put it into the Torah, right? Or why can't Moshe think of this by himself? So the answer is, so we'll get we'll get to that in a minute. The, the answer is because Hashem can't recommend something lower than what already exists. And Moses is on such a high level of justice and righteousness that to lower that level of justice, justice and righteousness would be against what Hashem really desires. Hashem is pure truth and pure just. And Moses Moses is the best channel for Hashem's energy in the world. So Ma'alin bakodesh velo moridin. So that's so that's why Hashem couldn't. That's why Hashem can't uh, that recommend that. Okay, so it has to come from a human being, and it has to come from Yisro, which is outside of the Jewish people, because he's not negia bedavar. He's not connected to the issues. In other words, he's not biased to the issues that are going on within the Jewish people, and so on. So when he gives this advice, oh, you guys should put the Sanhedrin together, he's giving a non-biased um, opinion, and that's why it has to come specifically from Yisro. Okay? Now, um, Yisro is, and Yisro and Moshe are dancing a little bit, because you have, have Yisro gives his daughter to Moses, Moshe, her name is Tsipora, and Really, the reason Yisra can't even go into the the Jewish camp, he cannot go into the Jewish camp. He has a very big issue going into the Jewish camp. It reminds me of somebody, but I'm not going to get into it. Uh, so yeah, he okay. he has a very perhaps big issue should, going. Uh, uh, perhaps we should put to say, okay, it's the camp of Israel. You know, the birthplace of the Jewish people was not Egypt. You know, it was the land of Israel, and but we are not there yet. Right. We are still in the desert. No, I'm talking about the it. Jewish camp. Yeah. When I say the Jewish camp, I mean when they were in the I desert. know what you mean. I know what you mean. Yes. Uh, I know exactly. Camped out. Not like... <laughs> then that, now you got me thinking. I'm talking to the Germans. I'm saying a Jewish camp. What's going on over here? <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's the joke. That's the dark humor of the day. Okay. So... <laughs> So, uh, so, uh, so he cannot come in, but he tells Moses, I'm here. If not for the sake of your children, for the sake of your wife, come out. So Moses exits the camp. He leaves the, the clouds of glory to go meet Yisro. So Moshe comes out to see his wife and his kids. 
right? Sipora and her children. Now, according to Kabbalah, if I might, Yisro is Cain and Moshe is Hevel. And Sipora is Hevel's daughter. So before Hevel was killed by Cain, he had a daughter. Okay? And this daughter made Cain jealous of Hevel. Okay, according to Kabbalah. And the reason Kai I'm I'm not following killed this. Killed Hevel was able because to, he was uh, jealous of the daughter. He was jealous of the sacrifice. But the Kabbalah says there's another let's so let's do it simple. Imagine so let's start with the story of Cain and Hevel. Cain and Hevel are the first two brothers of uh, sons of uh, of, of Adam, uh, and Adam and Chava. Adam and Eve, yes. And Cain is is jealous. I'm sorry, not the daughter. I'm sorry, not the daughter. I'm sorry. Cain and Hevel. Cain and Hevel are born with a. My connection is not good. Let's see. Not, not so good. Yes. What we can do. Uh, our brothers. What is So Cain and Hevel, the story in the Torah, they grow up. And according to Kabbalah, I'm sorry, I, I born with a twin sister. That's according to Kabbalah. And Hevel's wife, which was his sister in the beginning, um, is very beautiful. And Cain is jealous of her. So he kills Hevel. When Hevel is killed, he marries... Um, Hevel's Hevel's wife is his uh, his sister. Okay, and to fix this issue, their souls are reincarnated again into this world. Moshe is Hevel. Okay. Okay. And Cain is Yisro. Yisro. And Hashem makes it such a way that Yisro's daughter was Hevel's wife. And now he has an opportunity to give his daughter back to Moses. Which was really Hevel's wife, give him back his wife to fix the tikkun of what he did of killing Hevel out of jealousy. So that whole thing is according to Kabbalah. And I just thought it was interesting. And I thought I would share it. Now, let's talk about the... the Israel is basically saying we're going to distribute the talk. Uh, we're going to make more messengers, more shluchim, more messengers to spread the word of Hashem. This is going to lower the quality of the Torah because it's not straight from Moshe Rabbeinu anymore. It's now every other Joe, every every advisor of a hundred or ten or a thousand in a perfect way, the way Hashem intended. However, this makes it more available to the, to everyone, to all mankind. And being that Hashem is righteous and He has mercy on all of His creation, and even the even the tzaddikim understand. That it doesn't, that doing chesed and spreading the Torah is the biggest kindness, and that's the whole purpose of the Torah. And like water that flows to the lowest places, so too the Torah has to naturally trickle down to every single corner of the world. Hashem and the righteous and the tzaddikim, everyone agrees that we're ready to make the sacrifice of the quality of the Torah in order that it should reach more people. And in the extreme cases, we have Islam um, that are uh, a, a twisted interpretation of the Torah that actually costs the Jewish people dearly later on. Because um, in those names, Jews are persecuted and stuff. But at the end of the day, if, if Hashem's word and Hashem's wisdom can go down into the world, the Jews being Hashem's light unto the nations are ready to accept that 
consequence because they're not here for a lichtike Gan Eden. They're not here for a, 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 light, a lit up uh, heaven. They're here to serve Hashem and to help. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, Joseph Ederi, your connection is really bad. To really make it this world a better place. Now, oh, sorry. the last it, thing. You okay. are a lot interrupted by your connection. It's a, it's not too easy today to follow you. But maybe I, I can tell you, uh, maybe I can just give some things in and you can answer them. Because... Um, as we from the nation okay. of Ephraim followed this, all the biblical stories the last years very on a practical way in our time. And we are, we are talking about uh, the need of an Sanhedrin to bring uh, a, a, a law, a court with, with, with law again. And as we talk about the uh, problems in the Holy Land from the... So maybe you, we can focus a little bit more on the on the present uh, me uh, consequences f f from this because I want to add one thing. We talked about the Pope and and Jerusalem again today, who owns te the Temple Mount. We we talked about Jesus, who was a Jew, uh, uh, where the Christians only believe in in as uh, idol worship maybe, but not what he does as a Torah law. So so uh, I maybe. The Sanhedrin is is related to the Jesus story also very much, as you mentioned, Rabbi Koren Aloro. So the Sanhedrin was delivering Jesus maybe to the Romans. So and today we need the Sanhedrin again, which is uh, which is also a practical movement of finances and uh, law. We we need some. Uh, a, a big move from from energy from leftist financial uh, flows to to uh, our flows in 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 justice so I, I address you because of this because we need your help from the you as a Jew uh, to to build the Sanhedrin this is what our need in from our people in Germany that we actually really need a Sanhedrin. Uh, it's a concrete story for today. So, so I just want to mention the uh, focus, but maybe you can start again. What you The, the connection is not so good, Rabbi Ederi, from your side, sorry. I, I will try my best. I will try my best. So the, with me and all, we're talking earlier about that people should make contracts. No, I guess it I, does I, not it really, way. Okay, one, one, and one hopefully, second. we finish my point. So, as I was saying, we were saying, me and Ulf, that we hope to be able to offer. Uh, our Noahides and our Jewish brethren a opportunity to sign up and create a, their marriage contracts with us um, through our website, through the Sanhedrin Initiative as part of one of the options that we're going to give out. And when a person will make a contract with his wife to get married, part of the contract will be that if they have any issues, they will... they they the, the binding contract of of the marriage will be that the way they will resolve the issue will not be in the secular court systems of Edom or the court systems that pretend to be part of the Torah, but they don't really actually have a backing of, you know, ortho, orthodox rabbis teaching the Torah behind the courtroom. So we would give people an option that if they have to resolve an issue, they can choose from... Hopefully we'll have the 70 advisors and the 70 judges and they'll choose someone from within there and say, you know, we need some help with our marriage. Should we get divorced? Should we settle our issue? But they should settle it in the Torah system. And this would be an option for people that already understand how important the Torah is. So we're talking about the ultra-Orthodox Noahide community. I would assume the nation of Ephraim. I would assume... Um, religious Jews that actually take the Torah seriously 
And for those who are not religious, they have to understand that what we're doing is promotion of life. Torah is life. And the only other option is the opposite of life. So that's what we see with communism. So even though there were good things that came from communism, like the fact that the Pope and the Vatican and the, and the systems of, of the church were uh, ripped out of systems of government. However, that was only a temporary fix because Esau was never supposed to be the one in charge of teaching the Torah. And that's also important. The Christians aren't supposed to interpret the Torah. They're supposed to study it from the Jewish people. They're supposed to protect the Jewish people. Their blessing is not Hakol Kol Yaakov, to speak and to pray and to study. Their blessing is Al You should live on your sword. Now, if they're quiet enough and if they're humble enough, they can study the Torah from Yaakov, of course. But they shouldn't take the responsibility of telling the Jews how to keep the Torah. So back to the point, those who are not religious should just at least understand that the Torah is life and what we're promoting is life. Yeah, I would uh, like to add to, to this point, you know, that, um, you know, you said marriage contract. I was talking about business contracts. We have um, a very, um, you know, very practical issue. You know, right now there is all types of businesses are going bye bye. You see, you have, you know, suppliers in a foreign country, you know, a lot of stuff is made in China. So suddenly there is a container ship stuck in a Suez channel. You don't get your stuff delivered. So now, uh, so you have trade relationships and so on and so on. And all these relationships currently out there are not running based on Torah law. They are running on, um, you know, the current financial trade laws you know, um, UCC, Universal Commercial Code, and so on and so on. And um, so for, for us, I said, okay, uh, for each person who signs on here on Zion5777.com, he signs that the, he accepts that the Torah and the prophets are his terms of service. And we promote a very, you know, uh, self-determined living, you know, each, uh, you know, uh, you are a living son of God who is following the will of your father in heaven. Well, then you should uh, be responsible for your own business, for your own kingdom, for your own family and so on and so on. And the most important thing to support you is, of course, having relationships, business relationship with other people. So, and here um, is we said, okay, our job is this, you know, to, to bring more and more people to accept that the Torah of Moses and the prophets of Israel, this is the constitution, that they literally accept this in written form as their terms of service. And now we hope that the, the Sanhedrin and the initiative is a complete service where now these two Two guys who want to keep the Torah, Jew, Gentile, whatever, it doesn't matter, everybody who will submit to the Torah, that they make a contract, and this contract can now be registered in the Sanhedrin market, they're registered with us, and the contractual partners in a business, they already agree when there is problems in the business, there is anything out of that contract that they are solved under the laws of Torah and the Prophets, and you know, with the um, you know, via the sun headed, and I think this is an, an amazing service where currently hardly anybody knows which laws are where valid. You know, people, investors, you know, where should you invest money currently? Uh, is your contractual partner is he worth it? You know, is he is he of good reputation, and so on and so on. So I think, you know, this is one of the major issues that you can give the, um, that you have um, a, a basic law where everybody can agree upon and people are immediately bound to say, yes, we stick to this law. This is eternal. We believe in this. And now we are going to um, a mediator so that whatever is broken in a relationship, in a contract, will be fixed, you know, in the sense that uh, it's going to life. And I think this is an amazing service. We, you know, should, you know, put out in form of uh, contracts and, 
regulations, policies, and procedures, and when people order it. You know, it's a contract. You can register your contract with the Sanhedrin. And in case, like a security, you know, like an insurance, like in case something happens, well, then you can call on the judge. You know, and I think this is one of the uh, biggest issues, you know, in order to build, you know, our, uh, this really science-centered business model. You know, um, what Hannes said, you know, we are very practical issues, you know. Um, you know the whole story with Tsipora, of course, you know. Moshe had an Ethiopian wife. Because of that, Aaron and Miriam were permanently nagging. So I personally believe, you know, that Moshe sh shipped his wife off, you know, and then his, uh, you know, then her father said, why did Moshe ship? Hey, Moshe, why did you send back your tipi? Oh, my word, you have all these problems. Okay, let me help you. You know, it's a nice, <laughs> so that's the in-laws, you know, so <laughs> stepfather, schwieger, no, schwieger. Yeah, yeah, the Shviga. Yeah, the Shviga. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so now, of course, Ulf, uh, the Sanhedrin market is is an important uh, integral part of what we've been working on over the last few years, um, and uh, it's uh, becoming clear to me that it's a very, very sophisticated and complicated thing to put together. But we are definitely going to deal with it. Right now, we are focused on the Sanhedrin initiative scouting mission and the fundraiser campaigns in order to push that. We would like to filibuster um, all the 70 seats of the advisors, all the 70 seats of the um, judges. We also, the reason we're pushing for the Sanhedrin, Sanhedrin uh, initiative scouting mission right now is because it's Ingen Shazman Groma, which means it's something that the, the time demands we focus on this right now, um, especially with the with the current system in, in the government. So the Sanhedrin market is definitely something that we will um, put together hopefully sooner than later. Right now, we are, uh, as I said, you know, focused on the scouting mission, collecting rabbis, advisors, putting to, and putting together a proper uh, representation in the Knesset, and uh, you know, gathering uh, connections between all the Jewish scholars in Israel. This week, we plan on visiting uh, Ariel, uh, Rabbi uh, Aloro, and um, another few rabbis. We're going to be going with our, you know, about five guys from the advisory board and and justice uh, boards of the Sanhedrin, visiting uh, two prominent rabbis in Israel, and. Uh, also, one of our advisors is flying in, um, so we plan on uh, giving him a good time and also doing some uh, work about regarding policing. We plan on doing a video series about police and how the Sanhedrin uh, should understand the issues that the police have as well. Because the police, they have their perspective. You know, they come to an emergency, they have to deal with it with very limited amount of information, with very limited amount of uh, time and sometimes training or resources. They, and they and it's a life and death situation that is decided in split seconds. So they have their issues and their angle on how they see things. So we're trying to make sure that on one hand, you know, the, the safest way would be just to kill everybody and put everyone in the graveyard. And then, and then safety first, you know, why? <laughs> when the cop pulls you over, he should shoot the guy in the head and then uh, ask him for his license because. You never know what could happen. So obviously that's like creating the world in din, in justice, in judgment. But obviously we need to put rachamim, we need to put mercy into the mix and create a balance. So of course, like we spoke about in our earlier sessions about you know not getting the Bible dirty when you swear on it. It's important that every police officer should um, have access to our course. Um, and uh, watch our morality and ethical discussions about these things so he should know how to police in a godly manner. You know, So we hope to develop that as well in the, next, in the, in the upcoming uh, visit of our fellow advisor. And uh, yeah, and hopefully the Sanhedrin market again. And of course, we're very proud to have uh, Temple Coin, Hans in charge of the uh, Mint uh, so that the, the Sanhedrin market can be backed with proper silver and gold 
and uh, go back to the proper way of the Torah of value. Of course, value in a Torah society is charity, acts of goodness and kindness, gold, silver, honest weights and measurements. So we're going to a society where today the most valuable thing is the military industrial complex, which is bloodshed and adultery, which is like what we see on the Internet. That's the most valuable thing. And idol worship, which is just the ignorance of the masses. So when we change with the Sanhedrin market, and of course the Sanhedrin Health Organization and the ships of Tarshish and the, the Levium page and the, and the Kohanim page and the community and all the other things we're doing, we are really changing the entire system into a different system where value is based on gold and silver, on acts of kindness, different value system completely like the Sanhedrin market shares as well right correct I, I put and one all here. these things I so i put one here i put it in the background yeah so the Sanhedrin market shares are for people that want to get into our market into our system of value um they can get in early they can get in now and they can get a share which right now isn't worth very much in today's climate of, of, of degeneracy, but this could be value, very, very valuable in the Torah perfected um, a reality that we're going to put together with Hashem's help. Yeah, I think, you know, from our perspective, I think, uh, Hannes, uh, you agree that from our perspective, it's uh, the Sanhedrin initiative is one of the most important issues we face right now. Now, especially uh, everything what has to do with anti-Semitism in, you know, in foreign countries against non-Jews who keep the Torah and so on. Um, there is a lot of stuff going on which goes completely off the radar because we have a completely secular um, propaganda, mainstream media reporting. And nobody oh. really helps us on there. So what I want to address to the audience again, maybe if I, if I can, is this uh, the importance of the Sanhedrin also, because when you mention Rabbi Hedari, that you visit Rabbi Elo, you're going to visit Rabbi Ariel Alo. You always take care, he's not a rabbi, he's only a Cohen. <laughs> only uh, a Cohen. 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 It takes very pride in this. Ariel Cohen Aloro, which, who is uh, uh, also uh, was thinking about the redemption of the firstborn regarding the Sanhedrin, uh, uh, who, who just if justice, uh, just what's it? Sorry for my English. That now, the Sanhedrin who ruled over Jesus. So I, I want to address the that we are living in in fulfilling prophetic uh, times. Times that the prophet prophecy is already fulfilling now, and the San Sanhedrin plays a really big historic role in it. Uh, it we got it's it comes to to uh, the Pope and Jesus stuff with, who rules all world and that that this is a big opportunity when when democracy now going down in Israel, I, I guess it will very soon come a very big point of time where the Sanhedrin will play a big, big role in this. So the, the, there's a fi financial transition also related. So when you say, so I can proud to tell the Temple Coins, uh, our market already works. Our system works. We, we have a system built, created with the FM National Gold Silver Trust where we can make a science-centered gold silver business, so we can we have already prepared. It's it's all working, uh, we, and and we can explain different time. But the the prophecy, prophecies which fulfill this is really in our present time. It's not oh we are. It's really now. So everybody can be a part of, and I want to support this also. So because it's. It's a financial changing of, of the system. The, the, democracy, the leftists will go down and we will go up in the same uh, time. And, and it's, the time is maybe not too uh, far, long from now. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And we're very, and, and I'm interested to um, visit and explore and understand uh, the potentials in, uh, 
in uh, the systems that you guys have up. I was actually, uh, like uh, Hannes, we, we went to the uh, Torah Club one day and we used the uh, the rooms to chat live together and we had some guests pop in and that was, that was very fun. So that was a real-time use of the social media platform yes. that you guys have. And... Um, uh, of course, we have like like uh, Ulf said, you have the ten dollar option, which is uh, recommended, and uh, you have an uh, 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 you also have an option to enter for free. And of course, the main thing is that the 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 people can flow uh, into the social media platforms um, that are Torah based, like we spoke about in our uh, 14th episode, if I'm not mistaken, and um, and I believe that that um, with this push for Torah and with this push for business being conducted in honesty, with this push for justice, with the Torah, with this push of all these aspects at the same time, it's really like creating a brand new government. It's really like creating a brand new system that everybody can migrate to Absolutely. as the old system falls, you know. Yeah, I think when you said it's uh, not creating a new system or something like this, you know, it's um, so we said Hashem is king. And how does, you know, the kingdom of Hashem lives out? Well, in the moment you keep the laws of the king, well, you erect the kingdom of Hashem. And that kingdom of Hashem, of course, is, uh, you know, you do business, you do the temple, you have a son, you have a son, Hedrin. And of course, on Mount Zion, there is a throne of David and, you know, somebody is reigning from there. So um, this is why I'm very exciting, you know, that we at the moment where everybody discussing now, OK, do we are now is Israel, you know, is this now a Jewish state or a democratic state? And I said, OK, yeah, when it's a Jewish state, well, then it has to end up with Torah. It has to end up, you know. When it's a democratic state, <laughs> okay, yeah, then you have the sodomites still continue. De -de 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 -de. Christopher Street Day, you know, LGBT, I mean, people go nuts, you know. But <laughs> in that case, there will never ever be peace because democracy is just too fragmented and currently the radical left are too violent. Their call for violence, they are so bloodthirsty, it's amazing. You know, but when we turn to the Jewish identity, back to Torah, well, then we have to end up at the end, you know, with the Sanhedrin and with the righteous payment, with the Yom Kippur, with the Geula, and so on and so on, because it's written in the Torah, you know. Well, if I want to say that some people want to know how the, and, and I think with this, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll end our uh, discussion. We'll have closing statements, perhaps. But I want to address how the Sanhedrin is currently being uh, put together by myself and so that people don't be, shouldn't be worried that it's corrupt, you know. So I want to explain that point. The, the, the way right now the Sanhedrin is being put together is that I am going around discussing, you know, some people say that they're the biggest rabbi in Israel. But when you want to actually meet them, they don't exist. It's just an office or it's, or they're having health issues, unfortunately, or they passed away or unfortunately, we should never know of these things. But I'm going around Israel one at a time, person by person, meeting each and every one of these people, getting their information, interviewing them, uploading the videos of their opinions onto the onto the websites and onto the Internet and really telling them how heavy the responsibility of being an advisor or being a member of the Sanhedrin is literally this is very frightening for some people. Why should I be an advisor, or why should I be part of the judges? This is too, too gula for me, or this is too you know serious for me. So automatically the filterization of who who is who is really an Shekhail, Who are these people that are ready to stand and serve the community and give advice and judge the people? And give truth and justice and righteousness, and are of course up for the task. So that's literally how we're putting this together, and um, that is that is basically it's a it's a livid experience, and we're documenting everything. In other words, everything is open source, and that we make very we make it very important that we make an 
emphasis that everything we do is open. We have a page on the on our website on mnglobal.org where we have the day one, day two, day three, and everybody can read a few words about every single advisor. We have now the languages of all the advisors and the judges. So we have German, Chinese, Japanese, English, Hebrew, Yiddish, all the languages that the advisors speak from all over the world. So slowly but surely, we're going to have all the 70 languages, maybe not each one speaking all 70 languages, but together we'll be definitely past more than 70 languages. And, and hopefully uh, people will recognize how serious we are about what we're doing and uh, support. Assist, you know, uh, help us in any way they want. And uh, this is also a good time to remind everybody that we have the fundraiser to support our scouting mission to go look for rabbis and politicians whoever wants to donate um, we have a uh, that's the uh don on on our website mnglobal.org as well as the nation of prime is also running the fundraiser on their website as well so definitely this is one of the most historic moments in time this is a once in a lifetime opportunity to push the sanhedrin in real time you know as a response to the collapsing uh, demonic systems you know yes. of the post-war war time Yes, absolutely. And it's our job. It's also our job, you know, to uh, to put in judges and magistrates and so on. And to whoever knows the law, okay, it's fine. But whoever does not know the law, well, you have to teach them. I mean, this is what uh, even I put on my uh, terms of service, you know, from Ezra 725, where it says, no, wherever you go, put judges and magistrates on and whoever does not know the law uh, the laws of our god well you have to tell them this is how it goes this is how it goes <clears throat> and i think you know this is a, a super duper service you know for the nations who are currently running national strategies on fighting anti-semitism and they have no idea what anti-semitism is you know and i think this is one of the biggest issues you know that what we are we, we were facing that people because they're so left that they are so left everything what has to do with the torah and so with the bible and you know they immediately turn away and say oh this is crazy we don't want to deal with this and this I, it cries for a solution and i you know this is why we are standing there 100 percent uh, behind you and so, uh, and of course, you know, the Sanhedrin initiative, that's what everybody should understand. It's an initiative which is really done by single people. So like I, you know, started one day, okay, now nation of Ephraim, one guy, <laughs> now, now we are a big group. So now you say, okay, Sanhedrin initiative, but with the target, yes, one day it's finished and you we have the Sanhedrin. And we will not give up until we have the 70 judges until you know there is really righteousness brought to the uh, to the nation and i think this is what uh, every uh, in each one uh, should understand that as much every one of us is just a normal son of man you know and uh, we would like to do the work of hashem that's it you know and everybody can join everybody can join and uh, you know to to help us to bring this issue to fulfillment to fruition you know uh hans should we show them should we show them the website uh of the of the mn global and show them the advisors and what we're doing you're muted. you're muted Hans. mike 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 <laughs> I, i'm no, sorry so uh, of course you can show your website i just want to say one sentence to your jewish brothers uh, because uh, I heard some people say, oh, he puts himself in the front line and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. So we from the nations, as we are Germans, we, we need the sun heaven for, for justice. Uh, so we are no Jewish people. We are very thankful for Mr. Ravi Ederi that he, that he really does, did this job, do this job, because... There are not too many people around, so it's a real stuff, and I, 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 I'm, I'm very thankful for your work, Rabbi Ederi, and that we finally really get this something to get justice. And there are a lot of people in the nations, no Jews, who really need that, not only Jews. Yes. 
You know, and uh, we would like to say, you know, there's of course, you know, Rabbi Feld already put out, you know, the. I duly. We didn't get the words. We didn't get. Sorry. We didn't get the words. We didn't get a word. And I think you also didn't get, uh, you know. Okay. So maybe this was a closing statement. I don't know. Yeah, this was a closing statement. No, some, I didn't hear. I, oh. you know, I was. Uh, so here, one second. Let's let's just go through <laughs> the website very quickly. Maybe Unless you can you cut through. Oh, if you want to say something, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Oh. Yes, I wanted to add, you know, the lag. The yeah, there's lag. a huge lag. There's a huge lag right now, and you know, I was actually saying that, you know, we were we are following, you know, the advice of Rabbi Feld. You know, Rabbi Feld, you know, put out a fat video. Ephraim needs the rabbis, <laughs> and now he's back, and now the rabbis are gone. So hilarious. <laughs> okay, but you made it, maybe. The, the last uh, screen is the website, MN Global, and then BAM. Okay, so due to the uh, technical difficulties, I will push now. Oh, Rabbi Edry is coming back. I was just uh, wanted to say, okay, due to technical difficulties, we excuse this and would like to have the closing statement. Uh, short before okay, okay. you were cut out. I was saying so that Rabbi Feld, who is involved, you know, in the reconciliation work and, you know, co-founder of Kola Tour Vision, you know, which are doing now the Commonwealth of Israel conference. He, like about a year ago or something like this, he put out a video, you know, on uh, channel, so Ephraim needs the rabbis. And since then there is a discussion, okay, to what extent? And then, of course, I said, yes, absolutely, definitely, yes, Ephraim needs the rabbis, but not any. You know, we don't take any, it's not that we say, okay, every rabbi, no, 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 no. We said, we will look for some really cool guys, you know, we can work with. And it's a really honor to do work with you guys, you know, to work with you also now with Ben Zion. And it's, uh, you know, always a pleasure, you know, to talk to you, to, to, you know, to ponder about the great things of Hashem and now work on this absolutely super duper historic, unprecedented project. Yeah, it says never, and um, I cannot stress yes. enough. To Thank you, and it's my honor, Ulf, and it's my pleasure to work with you guys as well. Because again, it's very, very hard to come by people that really get what we need to do, even within the Jewish community. Unfortunately, um, some Jews, because of the what the exile, what the Gullus has done to them, trauma, generational trauma of thousands of years. Um, is just some Jews just can't articulate what redemption really is, and they're kind of stuck. So, what we're doing now is that we're spearheading the redemption from a Noahide, ultra orthodox Noahide, and Jewish perspective at the same time, working, you know, for Hashem, our Father in heaven, trying to unite the brothers, you know, Ace of Yaakov, Yishmael, and really uh, straighten out. You know, five thousand years of history. This is, this is the, this is the Basi Legani. I have come to my garden. This is Hashem returning to the Shechina, the, 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 to the, to the earth down here. This is the, this is the purpose of creation, and uh, it's a very exciting, very intimidating, uh, job that we're doing. I don't even believe that it's like, it's very, it's almost unreal to think that you know. You know, so much. Uh, all of our ancestors brought us to this moment in time, and and that we're uh, part of such a great thing. So let's let's just um, show you guys. Let's try one more time. Hopefully, Hashem will bless us and allow this to go smoothly. <laughs> there we are. So this is our website. Some people don't know why I put the Rebbe there. They get confused. It's because the Rebbe for me is the one who gives license for the Chassid, and I'm a Chassid. To actually deal with the stuff of Mashiach. And in the middle is the logo of the Chassid, which now is our time to shine. The Rebbe says, 
it's up to us to make the world a better place. If we're going down here, we have a number and, of Sanhedrin uh, members. And Joseph, we could... Five judges. Perhaps, you know, I can jump in okay. here. You know, in the Haftarah, we had yes. that this week in the Haftarah, we had the portion of Isaiah, you know, where the um, yeah, son of man take the lips, you know, said, yeah, who shall I send? Yeah, send me, send me, send me. And the, we are the people who were said, okay, the call of Hashem going out, hey, do you want to do something for me? Well, it's going out for eternity. But it needs an ear to listen who says, yes, okay, send me, I'm going. And I, I believe, you know, that everybody who's participated are belonging to those guys who had uh, an ear to Hashem and says, yeah, okay, I, I do it. Okay, there is nobody else there. Yeah, okay, I do it. I do it. Absolutely. Right. So, Bemakam She'ein Ish, in a place where there's no man, try to be a man. That's from Pirke Ovis and, and other places as well. So, here we see 58 advisors left, 12 advisors already available. Five judges already available, 65, and every day we're adding more and more and more, more, especially with the support of your fundraiser and our fundraiser together. We'll be able to continue pushing this all the way down till it's going to say zero here. And it's going to say <laughs> so. Here is the judges. We have a lecture or interview as an option. And of course, you see here is the language that they speak. So this is. Rabbi Binyamin Edri, for, uh, this is Rabbi Hayak, but let's go back a second. We have Rabbi Binyamin Edri, my uncle, chief rabbi of Japan. So he speaks Japanese, of course. And uh, we have Rabbi Buki from Golan Heights. And uh, myself, I've been seeing Gagola. Adam Sharon, uh, a follower of Rabbi Yitzchak Ginsburg. And... Uh, Specialty is Kabbalah and uh, numbers and dates and things like that. Rafi Farber, uh, Moshe Cohen, uh, Sean Lee speaks Chinese. And then we have, of course, Paul and Hannes from the Nation of Ephraim. They speak. And here we have the fundraiser. Um, so far, 620, but you know, it's that's not that's barely enough to uh, put together a okay, Sanhedrin. So, uh, so we have already a bit more. I think we're already at 660. So yes, we, you guys we are winning. Make it a race, you know. We should make it a race uh, because you know people should understand. You know, to to make an engine um, run, you need some oil. Yes, Absolutely. definitely. Yeah. And I couldn't uh, imagine anything more, you know, if you want to do something good to the Jewish people. Now, I had a friend that said to me, Mashiach, and make the Sanhedrin. And he said to me, I never thought about trying to bring Mashiach. You know, I'm happy that you're involved in it. So for those kind of people, at least give a donation. You know, if you don't have time to deal with Mashiach, at least uh, give us a small donation and we'll try to do the work for you. <laughs> Yes, so, uh, I mean, there is a, uh, we should, uh, and I said this already, you know, we should contact every rabbi who out say, goes out and says, no, we wait for the Mashiach. Ah, all right, that's good. So we can exclude you. You are not the Mashiach. So please pay here, do here, and be active here until we have found him. <laughs> right. right. Or, or until we, until we create a Sanhedrin and put the infrastructure there to be able to crown a king and, and go according to the law and do it according okay. to the Rambam and so on. Okay. So here we have all the projects that we're involved in, whether it's the, the, yes, the, the cool Justice logos. Board or the Advisory Board. Really cool yes. logos. Each of these is a link, of course. You click on it and it takes you to the page. And this is the Sanhedrin Initiative Fundraiser. Sanhedrin Health Organizations, we plan on adding many products. Another project that is on standby a little bit because of the the uh, urgency of putting together the scouting mission. So we're kind of on pause over there, but we'll get back to it as well sooner than later. And of course, we have our articles and different initiatives. We have our mission statement, which we should definitely update because we're actually in real time, changing the reality on the ground. So we say here, of course, we this was updated 2022, but it was written at 2018. 
It says, in order to establish a Sanhedrin, we need to unite the Jewish rabbis and subsequently the Jewish people and its Noahide allies via leadership. That's kind of in the middle of happening right now. Right-wing Orthodox Jewish rabbis within the Israeli electoral system should unite. So parties, I'm sorry, right-wing Orthodox Jewish parties, they're already united. So yeah. really, seven is already checked off. Seven is already checked off, and now we're already creeping into the sixth. <laughs> so as far as, let's go down to the four-step plan for a moment. One second. Where is the four-step plan? Here it is. The larger four-step plan, this is already pretty much in action. And now we're holding step two. And uh, we're working on this right now. So we're already deep into step two with the establishment of the Sanhedrin. After that comes crowning a Jewish king and building the temple. And uh, that note, we have here the map of the kingdom of Israel. So we have the king from the line of David, the heart from the line of Aaron, the Sanhedrin, the leaves, the Kanim, and the Illuminati and the pyramid in the background. I'm just kidding. But <laughs> and then the third, Beit HaMikdash, and the house of prayer for all nations. And on the side, we have the advisory league, which is basically advising Sanhedrin, and also advising the Knesset, and the 12 tribal princes of Israel, and the Sanhedrin of 23 scholars in all cities in Israel. And then, of course, we have the 12 tribes of Israel. And how it all comes back to this third temple, to the Beis Amikdash, where we can all be and, uh, and and witness Hashem, with Hashem, you know, if Hashem merits that we, we here is the Sanhedrin initiative, which we are really pushing. Um, this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to create a system that... Um, with it, with the taxpayer money of the Jewish people, the truma, of course, it uh, by be the way, from the poor. That's opposite to what the Torah says. By the way, yeah. you know, would you go back for a slide? You have here this um, with the crazy Jewish conspiracy theory. Uh, could yeah. you go back there. Uh, yeah. come get some of this Jewish conspiracy sauce. Now, I mean, this is one of the biggest issues, you know, with the, uh, you know, with the Christians, why they are against this. They say, say, oh, no, we will not support the Jews building the temple because the Antichrist comes. And so, uh, yeah. well, this is, so this is now the biggest conspiracy that, you know, the Chabad and so on, and they're all working to bring forth the Antichrist because they're so stupid. They cannot recognize their own Moshia, you know, because which is Jesus. So they will bring the Antichrist. And, you know, by putting this out, you know, it's like flat into the face, flat into the face. We, I mean, we should really go. I said, hey, you know, you want to know what's about all about, about the conspiracy? Yes, you want to help us bring the Antichrist? By the way, it was already there. Look at this. Right. So for those people who are worried that we are enabling the Antichrist, they should rest assured, like we spoke about in our 14th video, the, the exciting uh, Zoom call. Um, that that uh, the the Vatican and the, the Pope is the Antichrist. Yes, and and that's it. The Antichrist is not amongst the Jews. It's it's the creation of 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 a corrupt system within the House of Edom. So when 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 a guy like Asav is trying to pretend that he's studying Torah, so on the way, this is actually. Rashi speaks about this in the oral tradition. We know that Esau is going to hunt and kill and steal. And on the way to going to hunt and kill and steal, he passes by Yaakov studying and he hears a little bit of what's said. And then he goes back home and he tells his father, Yitzchak, which is half blind and he's not exactly 100%. He says, oh, yeah, I was studying all day. You know, I heard this and this and this in the, in the house of study, you know, and he walks he walks into the house with, you know, with his hands full of heads of people that he ripped their heads off, you know, and he's collecting heads. So, so uh, the 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 Christians need to understand that if they truly want to, if they truly want to serve Hashem, their their tithes and their money needs to go to the Sanhedrin initiative. Their their uh, you know if they made it to a place where they're already donating to God in a, in some kind of church. 
and then they're wasting their time. It's, it's great that you made it all the way to a point where you're ready to open your wallet and give a donation to Hashem. But don't give it to a church. Give it to the Jewish people. We have business to take care of. We have a justice system to build. We have a base on English to build. We have a king to crown. We have a, we have a Torah to fulfill. Yep. You know, we're 80, we're 87 mitzvahs deep into the, fulfilling the commandments of the Torah. And we want to get to 613. Anything your pastor is teaching you is, is maybe 0.0.1% of what you can actually get if you allow the Jewish people to teach you the Torah. So just drop the facade, drop the, you know, the, 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 you know, comfort zone of, of, of the fake reality that you find yourself in and come join the real deal. Come, come join the big leagues. You know, people are adults. I, I, I'm surprised that adults are, are still, you know, buying all this stuff, you know, so we are, and, and for those who already know what we're doing, they already know that part of our mission and they're following our, our, our classes. They already know that part of our mission is to resolve the Jesus issue yeah. and to um, perhaps make a retrial and, and so on and so forth. And uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. And of can. course, it's related to Jerusalem. So put your money to Jerusalem in the end, maybe. Uh, so thank you, Rabbi Josef Edri, for the showing of, of your website. I, I think we can put it like this. Uh, and can, and so thank you for the stream. Uh, finally, I can mention templecoin.org do, templecoin also. You can have a look. Uh, I'm, we are very thankful it's related to the Sanhedrin shares also. So we do this together from Ephraim and Judah. And uh, I, I, I'm for sure that we will that everybody will recognize Moshiach soon. And uh, so... Especially anyway, when he wears these glasses. With his special glasses, yes. <laughs> so I'm fine with this end. Do you want to add something or... Hello? Joseph? So... Joseph is away. Joseph is away. I think so. Now we should really. No, we're good. We're good. And the Machat is a shekel, of course, who want to buy. We're selling it. It's sold on the Nation of Ephraim. Put the links down under all the links, Rabbi Ederi, especially from TorahClub.com. Very important. We, we, TorahClub.com. This is our community with big uh, inside stuff. Uh, put all the links under the. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We do that on our club, and let's call it a let's call it a day. Thank you so much for watching to everybody. Excuse us for the technical difficulties. Next time, everything will work out again. See bye you bye. Soon.